وَإِنَّ and indeed لُوطًا لُوط عليه السلام لمن المرسلين he was surely among the messengers إذ نجيناه when we rescued him meaning mention when we rescued him وَأَهْلَهُ and his family meaning those who believed in him from his family from his people أجمعين all together all those who believed in him were saved إِلَّا except عَجُوزًا An old woman That was from his ahl But what happened? She was فِي غابرين. She was in those who remained behind Remain with who? The rest of the people ثُمَّ دَمَّرْنَا الْآخَرِينَ And then we destroyed the others Who are the others referring to? The people of Lut a.s. Notice over here, their crimes are not mentioned. The whole story of how he called them, he did da'wah to them, he warned them, nothing of that is mentioned. It's mentioned elsewhere in the Qur'an. Because over here the focus is on what? The fact that Allah saved Lut a.s. and only those who believed in him. Not necessarily those who were associated to him, through marriage or through blood ties or something. No, it was those who believed in him. Because ultimately, what will rescue us, what will save us, is not our worldly possessions or our links with other people. It is our own actions. So over here, the way the wife of Lut a.s. is described, إِلَّا عَجُوزًا فِي الْغَابِرِينَ عَجُوز Who is عَجُوز? عَجُوز, a very old person. عَيْن جِيمْ زَاي Ijz. What does Ijz mean? Weakness. So Ajuz is someone who's very, very weak due to old age. And Ijz is basically to remain behind while others have gone ahead. Okay? Meaning due to one's weakness, a person gets left behind. Does it happen with old people? The whole family is going to a wedding party. And the whole grandmother is at home because she, she doesn't have the strength to go. Everybody's going out for lunch and she's at home, he's at home. Right? They usually get left behind. If a group of people are walking, who is all the way at the end, at the back? It's the people who are old. So this is Ajuz. Okay? So Ajuz, it's referring to inner weakness. Alright? Or the weakness that is within the person because of which he gets left behind. غابرين غابرين is a plural of غابر who is غابر one who is in the غبار غين بارا okay. and what is that a dust cloud for example غابر is the one who stays behind in the dust cloud a group of people are walking okay they are traveling together and as they're walking they're leaving a trail of dust behind them okay for example and as they're walking, they continue to walk, but one of them stays behind. So where is he? Where is he? In the dust cloud. So, إِلَّا عَجُوزًا فِي الْغَابِرِينَ So غابر refers to the person who stays behind, behind his companions, after having walked with them. He was with his companions, but then what happened? He stayed behind. And his companions, his friends... They go ahead. إِلَّا عَجُوزًا فِي الْغَابِرِينَ She was the wife of Lut a.s. She was with him. But due to her own weakness, which weakness is this? Her inner weakness. Weakness of faith. Where is it that she remained? Behind. When Lut a.s. and his followers, they went, she stayed behind. ثُمَّ دَمَّرْنَا الْآخَرِينَ دَمَّرَ يُدَمِّرُ تَدْمِيرُ Completely devastate, utter destruction. Of who? The others, meaning the people of Lut a.s. Allah says, وَإِنَّكُمْ And indeed you, O people of Mecca, لَتَمُرُّونَ Surely you pass by, عَلَيْهِمْ Upon them, when مُصْبِحِينَ As ones entering the morning. Because the people of Mecca, they would travel very frequently. And they would travel towards Asham. And remember, Asham is in the north. Alright? And they would travel back and forth 
regularly and the trade route that they had adopted was a very ancient trade route so allah says that innakum latamurruna alayhim tamurruna from mim ra ra mirar it means to pass by something so you pass by upon them meaning their remains their dwellings the people of lut alayhi salam they lived right by this trade route and you walk by it when musbihin as you enter the morning musbihin plural of musbih and musbih is one who enters subh meaning as the day is rising because that is the time when people would travel because it's not that sunny it's not very hot so the best time to travel would be early in the morning or in the night okay so wa innakum latamurruna alayhim musbihin in your journeys you pass by their ruins wa bil and also in the night because they would also travel by night afala ta'qilun then will you not use reason when you journey to asham back and forth you pass by the ruins of these people you go upon the very trade route that they controlled once upon a time because remember of the crimes of the people of lut alayhi salam was that they would harass the travelers remember highway robbery exactly and and many other crimes that they committed so they controlled this trade route and now the people of makka were using the same road for their journeys by night by day they would pass by the ruins of these people So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking them afala ta'qilun will you not use reason meaning will you not take a lesson think about it what did they do to their messenger and what are you doing to yours what was their end and what do you think will be yours afala ta'qilun and this is something we need to remember each time we pass by any place all right where people lived once upon a time that at least it should remind us of death at least it should make us think about our lives about what we're doing not just that we pass by it and we admire their homes and we laugh at their buildings or their culture or whatever they made no take a lesson afala taqilun wa inna yunus and indeed yunus alayhi salam لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Surely he was among the messengers too. He was also a prophet of Allah. Sent to who? To the Bani Israel. In particular the people of Nineveh. And he delivered his message and he was harmed in the way of Allah just like any other prophet was harmed in the way of Allah. But Yunus alayhi salam, what happened? When he was harmed in the way of Allah such that his people denied him they rejected him he became angry with his people and in his frustration he left he left in surah al-anbiya ayah 87 we learn wa dhanuni idh dhahaba mughadiban and dhanun meaning yunus alayhi salam when he left angrily why did he leave his people because he was angry at them Remember that the work of Allah is such working for the sake of Allah is something that there is no quitting all right there is no quitting you never just quit and walk away even if you're working with for example a group of muslims for a particular islamic cause you never leave it as saying that that's it i'm done with islamic work i'm done no it may be that i think that this is not the best work for me i have to try something else You understand? You never quit when it comes to the work of Allah. No matter how upset and frustrated we are with the people that we are working with. Yunus alayhi salam got angry with the people that he was working with. Remember, he was not angry with Allah. Who was he angry with? The people. Why was he angry? Was he justified in his anger? Of course he was, because they weren't listening. He was trying so hard. He was fed up of their denial. So in his frustration he just left. But was that okay? It was not okay. Allah says id abqa. Mention when he ran away. Abqa. Abqa 
is a very interesting word. It's from the root letters Hamza, Ba, Qaf. Ibaq or Abq. And Abq is Al-Harab min as sayyid To run away from one's master. To run away from who? From one's master. So this word is used for a slave when he runs away from his master. Now think about it. A slave running away from his master. Why would he do it? Technically, why would a slave run away from his master? Have we heard stories of slaves running away from their masters? Yes, it happens. Why? Huh? Okay, because the master, the Sayyid, is very mean, very harsh, oppressive. Why else? Any other reason? Okay. He's just fed up. He doesn't want to work anymore. Why else? Okay. Yes? Okay. For freedom. You see, where there is fear of oppression, okay? Where there is fear of oppression or there is so much work that a person cannot handle it and a slave runs away, that's understandable. That's justified in a way. Alright? Because there is risk of his life. Like the Bani Israel. Technically, they were slaves of Firaun. Alright? And the master-slave relationship, I mean, it is a relationship. It's difficult for us to comprehend, but when before, in the past, when it existed, there was a relationship. Alright? This is similar to how if you're working somewhere, you have a contract. Isn't it? And you have to abide by that contract. You're expected to do some work, you're expected to show up at certain times. Right? And even if you want to leave that work, you can't just call one day and say, I quit. No, you have to give some notice. Isn't it? Is it true or not? Okay. So, abqur ibaq is used for when a slave runs away from his master without being induced by fear or severity of work. Meaning there was no reason for him to run away. It wasn't like the work was impossible. It wasn't like the master was oppressive. It wasn't like he was afraid for his life or he was afraid of mistreatment. No, nothing like that. The master in fact is very good. For instance. But still the slave runs away. This is the word abaqa. Now all of us are who? Slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if abaqa, this word is used, why? Because Yunus alayhi salam is a slave of Allah. And he was to do his work as long as Allah wanted him to. Was the work unfair? No. Was it impossible? No. Was he being oppressed? No. But he fled, he left without permission. So if abaqa ila al-fulki al-mashhoon, he fled where? To the laden ship. Fulk. Fulk is ship and mashroon from the root letters sheen, ha, noon. Shahm. Mashroon is ship that is loaded. Okay? Cargo, people, fully loaded. So the ship was already laden and he still got on it. Just imagine, a ship or a boat is already full. And now one more person gets on board. Is that going to create a problem? Yes, it will. So he left in anger, but due to no genuine reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not ordered him to leave. The punishment was not due on those people. And the life of Yunus a.s. was not in danger either. But still he fled. And when he fled, where did he go? He found a ship leaving the coast, the shore, and he also boarded it. But what happened? Fasahama. Then he drew lots. Fakana min al mudhadin, and he was among the losers. There is many different versions. All right. Some have said that there was a storm, and because of that, the ship wasn't really safe for people to continue on that ship. So basically, they had to get rid of some of the load. All right. And they decided that one person at least has to be thrown off of the ship. Now imagine if there's 30 people on a boat, is it fair to throw anybody? No way. But if the load is not reduced, then what would happen? All those people would die. You understand? 
So they decided that, okay, since the situation is so serious, it's so critical, we can neither continue like this, nor can we just randomly throw anybody off board. We have to choose. We have to choose amongst ourselves to decide who is going to be thrown off. So for that, what did they do? Tasahum. What does tasahum mean? Musahama seen ha meme saham. What does saham mean? Saham. Saham. I heard something? Arrow. Good. Musahama is to throw arrows in order to draw lots. Okay? Because that is what the Arabs would do. They would throw arrows to draw lots. People use different things. Sometimes people use paper, pieces of paper. Sometimes different things. Remember in the story of Maryam, what did the rabbis use? Their pens. Okay? So, Fasahama, he drew lots, he cast lots, but what happened? Fakana min al mudhadin. He was of the losers. Mudhadin, plural of the word mudhad. From the root letters, dal ha dad. Dahad. Dahad is to slip. And idhad is to cause someone else to slip. Okay? To make someone slip. Now when someone slips, they fall. And once they fall, that's it. They're done. So the word is used to defeat someone also. So mudhad is one who has been made to slip, one who has been made to fall, meaning one who has been defeated. Maghloob. فَسَاهَمَ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُدْحَضِينَ So due to the storm, the people of the ship decided to get rid of some load and that would mean someone would have to be thrown off the ship. So they drew lots for it. After multiple attempts, what happened? Yunus a.s. he failed and so the people decided to throw him off of the ship. It is said that the first time his name came up, they said that no, this man appears to be a very nice, righteous man. He couldn't have been a bad person. There's no way that we could throw him. It's got to be somebody else. right? He's too good of a person. So they tried again. Again he failed. So this happened numerous times and then they decided that they would have to throw him. So you see, everything was turning against him. فَسَاهَمَ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُدْحَضِينَ And as he was thrown into the water, فَالْتَقَمَهُ الْحُوتِ فَالْتَقَمَهُ إِلْتَقَمَ لَامْ قَافْ مِيمْ Lam qaf meem. Luqma. It means a bite or a morsel of food that you take in, into your mouth. Okay? And il taqama is to swallow something whole. What does il taqama mean? To swallow something whole. It's not something that we should do, but sometimes people do it. They don't chew their food, they just put it in their mouth and gulp it down. Right? It's not healthy at all. Chew your food. Okay, but anyway, the hoot, the fish, it swallowed him whole. Wahua mulim. Allah says, while he was mulim, Yunus alayhi salam was mulim. Mulim from the root letters lam, wow, meem, laum. What does laum mean? To blame someone, reproach them, censure them because of because of something wrong that they've done. Meaning they are deserving of that reproach. You see, the word maloom is also used. Maloom is someone who is reproached for a crime that they have not committed. They're being blamed, they're being censured, whereas they're not necessarily guilty. They could be guilty, but they could also not be guilty. But mulim is someone who is guilty. So, فَالْتَقَمَهُ الْحُوتُ وَهُوَ mulim. He was swallowed whole by the fish while he was guilty of a blameworthy thing. What was that blameworthy thing that he had done? He left his duty without permission from Allah. He was angry with the people and because of that he quit his work. وَهُوَ mulim. And look at the consequences. Look at what happened. He boards a ship and from that ship he's thrown off. And from there he's swallowed whole by a fish. Swallowed whole, what does that imply? That he did not die. Alright? Falawla. Allah says, falawla. So if it was not, that annahu, that indeed he, kana he was, minal musabbihin, amongst those who glorify. Glorify who? Allah. 
if he had not been of those who do tasbih where in the belly of the fish then what would happen la labitha surely he would have remained labth is to remain somewhere firmly meaning just to stay somewhere not get up from there not go from there so la labitha surely he would have remained fi batnihi in its button meaning the belly of the fish until when ila yawmi yubathun until the day they are resurrected meaning what got him out of the belly of the fish was what his tasbih his turning to allah otherwise he would have stayed he would have remained in that condition until when until the day of judgment what does this mean that there would be no escape for him he would not have gotten out of there because who can come out of the belly of a fish who in the middle of the ocean who can can anyone fight the fish and make a way out themselves no they cannot they cannot survive and even if they were to come out in the middle of the ocean how could they make it back to the shore it's impossible so the only reason why and how he got out of it was because allah took him out of that situation and why was that because of his tasbih otherwise he would have remained in the belly of the fish until the people are resurrected meaning there would be no escape for him and what this means is that he would have become food for that fish a part of the fish and that would be his end and some have said that ila yawm yubathun means that literally he would be trapped in the fish until the day of judgment yes assalamualaikum every time i go over this i it reminds me of like the different like struggles or problems that we go through in life and every human being is always looking for a solution of how to get through it so um sometimes like if there is an issue in the community they'll have town hall meetings and the people will come up with different types of solutions of how to solve a certain problem but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that the solution to every single issue that we have is doing tasbih of him or going back to him there are no other solutions other than going through him and anything that we do find is just a temporary solution it might it might work or it might not work but this if you do tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you turn back to the Quran if you you know if we're not praying salah if we're not doing certain things if we're not doing our dhikr then our problems aren't going to be solved no matter how like how many other ways that we try to solve them it's very true because the reason that's mentioned over here is his tasbih falawla if it was not for his tasbih he would have remained in the belly of the fish forever bismillah assalam alaikum i was thinking about uh, this ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us this in here in surah hijr also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i know what they say in about you just do tasbih and we kul min as-sajidin subhanallah that mean when we are in the darkness of the problem only tasbih the one help us tasbih takes us out of problems tasbih is the way out of our problems whether those problems are self inflicted self created meaning we are the cause of those problems or it is because of other people or whatever reason it may be because sometimes when we find ourselves in difficulty we can blame others right it's their fault and sometimes we have nobody to blame except who ourselves it was our bad choice it was our bad decision right but regardless of what the problem is what the cause was the way out of that problem is through tasbih because tasbih first and foremost it removes grief when we glorify and praise allah it takes away grief from our hearts and tasbih also averts calamities in surah al-anbiya ayah 87 88 the tasbih that yunus alayhi salam did is mentioned and what was that fanada fi al-dhulumati alla ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin that there is no god worthy of worship but you o allah you are perfect i have been wrong over here the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when a servant sincerely says la ilaha illa allah then the gates of heaven are opened for it until it reaches the arsh meaning the statement because remember ilayhi yas'adu al-kalimu at-tayyib 
The good words ascend to Allah. Literally. So, لا إله إلا الله When a person says it, the gates of heaven are open for it until that statement reaches the arsh. As long as the servant abstains from shirk. So when Yunus a.s. realized that he had made a mistake, he immediately turned to Allah in that darkness, humbling himself, acknowledging his shortcoming. And for that, he mentioned the glory of Allah and his own fault. The perfection of Allah and his own fault. لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين Oh Allah, you are perfect and as for me, I have been wrong. Another important thing we see over here is that, I mean, it seems like it was the end, it was all over. I mean, if a person has been swallowed by a fish, put yourself in that situation. If you were swallowed whole by a fish, by a whale, would you think that there is a way out of here? No, we would think it's over. I'm done. It's finished. I'm a loser. I'm a total failure now. There's no way out for me. But look at the hope. Look at the hope. لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين O oh Lord, I have done something wrong, but you are perfect. As long as I breathe, as long as I live, I will turn to you, begging you for your forgiveness and pardon. In some narrations we learned that Yunus a.s. when he was swallowed by the fish and, and he realized that he wasn't dead because inside the fish, the part that he was in, Allahu alam where he was, but wherever he was, he could breathe. You know, he was intact, he was alive. So he said, O oh Lord, I have taken as a place of worship a place which no other person has reached. I am worshipping you in a place that no other person has worshipped you in before. Look at the hope here. Look at the positive thinking over here. We would kill ourselves in depression. Right? We would destroy ourselves. It's amazing how Allah forgives people. We don't forgive ourselves. We don't. And yes, it's good to be strict with yourself, to hold yourself at a high standard, but it should not make us lose hope in Allah's mercy. Look at where he is, what situation he's in, but still he is turning to Allah. You know, the mistakes can happen if we are human. Even Nuh alayhi salam, he did mistake, right? And But he reflected back. And there is no way to go away from Allah, but the only way to turn back to Allah. Exactly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again listened to him. Yes. And he took him out of, you yes. know, this. Adam alayhi salam made a mistake. That got him out of Jannah. Can you imagine? And imagine the guilt that, that he must have been feeling. Allah clearly warned me that do not even go near this tree. And shaitan is your enemy. But still, I forgot. I made a mistake. And he wasn't alone. Hawa was with her, but still both of them made a mistake. You understand? But what happened? He also repented. Nuh a.s. repented. Yunus a.s. also repented. So no matter what mistake has been made, and no matter what situation we find ourselves in, never give up hope. And it shows how... His faith is complete because first thing he recognized is his mistake. He did not panic even though he was in the shadow in the sea and in this belly inside. He just think about it, his mistake and he just started to repent. That's the only person. Only thing that who can save him is Allah and he knew. And, he, and that shows his complete faith in Allah. Yes. Good. And uh, plus he is a prophet of Allah. He didn't say, well, Allah, I was your prophet. Why you do this one? I did not do any other mistake, just one mistake, and I didn't do bad, just I left it. We feel coming through uh, some calamity in our life, they said, Oh Allah, you didn't find anyone else except me, you choose me for this one. I pray, I do tajot, I do this one, I do this one. Why I have to go through all this stuff? But subhanAllah, he is the prophet of Allah, and he's still having hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the darkness, and he remembering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. He didn't justify the mistake and he did not become angry with Allah because he realized the mistake that he had made. Assalamu alaikum. So I was just reminded of a story that I came across like a couple weeks back and it was of a scholar who was um, traveling and he came to a place at nighttime and it, he went to the masjid to sleep 
and rest. And while he was there, there was a guard there who told him he couldn't be there. And to he kind of kicked him out. And so the scholar, he was just outside the mosque. And the guard came again. He was just like, no, you can't be here. And he literally dragged him across like the road and the street and left him somewhere farther away. And a bread maker, a baker, he saw him and he took the scholar in his home and said, you know, you can stay the night and stuff. And so while he was staying with this baker, he saw that he, while he was doing his bread, the whole time he was making tasbih continuously for hours. And so he said to him, how can you, like, you know, make tasbih for that long? Like, don't you get tired? And so he said, no, you know, like, this is what I do. And then he said, uh, like, what good has come out of making tasbih for this, like, all this time? And he said that I have never made a dua that has not been accepted. And so he asked him, you know, not even one. And he said, well, there is one. I had always wanted to meet, like, this scholar. And he took his name. And so he said, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so he said, subhanAllah, you know, like, dragged me. Like, I got dragged by my feet just for your this dua to come true. Yes. Amazing. Because of the spear, dua is accepted. You know, this ayah, فَلَوْلَا أَنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ Some scholars have interpreted this as had he not been of the musabbihin earlier, before he ended up in the belly of the fish. Meaning before this incident also, he did tasbih of Allah frequently. And in the belly of the fish also, he did tasbih of Allah frequently. So it was his previous ibadah and ibadah in that state that brought him out of the difficulty that he was in. So the ibadah he did before, and also while he was in the belly of the fish. And this is why, you know, the hadith that, تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ يَعْرِفْكَ فِي الشِّدَّةِ Remember Allah in good times, and He will remember you in your bad times. Yes. Even though Yunus A.S. had in a way been publicly humiliated, he still had the humbleness in him to repent despite that. Because oftentimes, like, when we're publicly humiliated, we become, like, arrogant or we, we fight back in the moment even though, like, we know we might have been wrong. Yeah, it happens. Because for him to be thrown off of the ship, right, by the people who are on the ship, this was humiliation. It was very embarrassing. When we say the speed, does it mean like the zikr of morning and afternoon? Or it should be a specific the speed that we should make part of our life? Okay. So this tasbih, if we take it as the tasbih that he did while he was swallowed by the fish, then it refers to the statement he said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Because this is also of tasbihat. Alright? And otherwise, tasbih can refer to any tasbih in the sense that subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim wa bihamdihi, there's different forms of tasbih. Alright? And remember that the word tasbih is also used for salah. It is also used for salah. Uh, there are a hadith, for instance, in Bukhari, in which the word tasbih is used and what is meant is salah. So when you first read those ahadith, it's kind of confusing. Why is tasbih mentioned over here? What is even meant by tasbih over here? But the sahaba, they were familiar with the term tasbih being used for salah. And this is why when we look at various makki surahs in which the command to do tasbih is mentioned, it has been interpreted as salah. Alright? So, فَلَوْلَا أَنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ Yes, he did tasbih as in dhikr, but it can also refer to salah or any form of worship that he did, that he performed while he was in that state. Yes. As-salamu alaykum. I feel like in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still recognizing the good of Yunus alayhi salam despite the wrong that he did. That yes, he made a mistake, but he was of those who glorified Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was still someone who turned back to him. And I feel like this is really important because I've read uh, stories of, you know, the Bible that talk about Yunus alayhi salam and they're very, a lot of them tend to be very disrespectful against him. How he was, you know, like they made him seem arrogant and, you know, like, 
just not a very good person and how he turned away against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his own arrogance. Like that's what they make it out to be. But this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still making it clear to you that yes, he made a mistake, but that's all it was. It doesn't make him a bad person. It doesn't, you know, take away from his status as a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, it reminds us of that, that yes, he may have made a mistake, but he was still a prophet of Allah. He was still an example for you and you should learn from him from what he did in this situation yes and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said that ma yanbaghi li 'abdin an yaqul ana khayrun min yunus ibn matta it doesn't befit any servant to say that i am better than yunus bin matta meaning we should not even compare between prophets and say that, oh, the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is better than Yunus alayhi wa sallam. Because Yunus alayhi wa sallam was, you know, he left his people in anger. No, we are not allowed to make such comparisons and to honor one prophet by dishonoring another. There is a lesson for us even in the mistakes of the prophets. And this is why the story is mentioned over here. And it really teaches us the way of tawbah. So, فَلَوْلَا أَنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ لَلَبِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ And you see when you are the cause of your suffering, meaning there is no one to blame but yourself. You're so angry with yourself, upset with yourself. This can really lead to you know, harming yourself even, going deeper and deeper into depression. And it's very detrimental. But we see that even in a state like that, do tasbih. That I cannot be perfect anyway. Yes, I have put myself in this problem. But you know what? That's because I'm imperfect. The perfect one is only who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al And a person who turns to Allah with such humility, then Allah also saves him. We see that two people, they called out to Allah when they were stranded at sea. One was Yunus alayhi salam and the other was Fir'aun. Who was saved? Yunus alayhi salam. Isn't it? Why? Because he did tasbih. When? Before this incident and also when this incident happened. So the way out of our problems is that we should have this good connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of tasbih, of ibadah, of dua. You know, there's that narration that we find in Ibn Abi Hatim that Anas bin Malik anhu reported that when it occurred to Prophet Yunus alayhi salam to call upon Allah in these words when he was in the belly of the fish, he said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Then this call, it went and hovered around the throne. And the angel said, O oh Lord, this is the voice of the one who is weak but known in a faraway strange land. Meaning, the voice is very familiar, but it's coming it's very weak and it's coming from a very far away and strange land. So Allah asked, how do you know this? And they said, oh Lord, who is he? They asked Allah, who is he? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that it is my servant Yunus. They said, your servant Yunus, from whom there kept coming acceptable deeds and supplications which were answered? They said, oh Lord, will you not have mercy on him for what he did during his time of ease and save him from this trial and tribulation. So save him, why? Because of what he did in his time of ease. And Allah responded, of course. So he commanded the fish and it cast him forth on the shore. فَنَبَذْنَاهُ بِالْعَرَائِ وَهُوَ سَقِيمٌ فَنَبَذْنَاهُ So we threw him. Literally the word nabada means to throw, to hurl something, fling it. So we flung him bil ara onto the ara. Ara ain raya. The word means to be naked. It, literally the meaning is to be naked. Like for example, for Adam alayhi salam, in Surah Taha we learn that he was told that in Jannah inna laka alla taju'a fiha wala ta'ara. Alright? That you will not be hungry in Jannah and you will not be naked. So this is the meaning of the word. And when this word is used for land, okay, it refers to land that is open, bare. Meaning there's nothing on it. Nothing on it. No tree, no shrub, nothing to hide under or to take cover with. So ara over here refers to the shore, the open shore, the beach. So he was thrown over there, وَهُوَ سَقِيمٌ While he was ill. 
He was physically unwell. He was weak in his body because he had been swallowed by a fish after all. So when he was thrown out of the fish, then he was unwell in his body. And at that place, no vegetation, no building, but Allah provided for him. وَأَنْبَتْنَا And we caused to grow. عَلَيْهِ Over him شَجَرَةً A plant, a tree literally, meaning a plant. Which plant? مِنْ يَقْطِينَ Of يَقْطِينَ Yaqteen is used for a plant that doesn't have a trunk. Trunk, like a tree, tree trunk. How is it? It's strong, alright, a stem even, it's strong, so it grows up, it's straight. So yaqteen is ma la saqalahu, that which does not have a saq as in no leg, no trunk, okay, meaning it spreads on the ground. So what is it then? A vine. Okay, a vine. Because it spreads on the ground. It grows on the ground. Inshallah, summer is coming soon. Inshallah. Before that is spring. Inshallah. Within a couple of weeks. So maybe you should try and plant something so that you can understand this ayah. Okay? You know, these plants that grow on the ground, that spread on the ground. Some scholars, they said that yaqteen refers to that plant which spreads on the ground and it dies in the winter. It dies in the winter. And that's exactly how it is. Have you ever seen pumpkin plants? Okay, if you don't grow them, maybe go to a farm. Right? Pumpkin? How is it? It's just on the ground. It looks so messy and you wonder why are all these weeds here? But when you look carefully, you'll find zucchinis and you'll find pumpkins and you'll find other plants or other vegetables like that. Even watermelon? Hmm? What else? Cucumbers also, they grow on vines. Okay, what else? Squash, right? Different types of squash. So, وَأَنْبَتْنَا عَلَيْهِ شَجَرَةً مِنْ يَقْطِينَ One thing that is interesting about these plants, about gourd vines, is that the leaves are huge. Okay, the leaves are huge. And because of those huge leaves, it's very easy to hide things under them. There could be huge watermelons, huge pumpkins, but they're hidden until they turn orange or a different color. Then they become visible. Even zucchinis, they're, they're hidden. You really have to look carefully and, you know, move the leaves around so that you can reach the vegetable. So, وَأَنْبَتْنَا عَلَيْهِ شَجَرَةً مِنْ يَقْطِينَ What does it mean? That we cause to grow over him? Meaning, to cure him, to nourish him, to shade him. Because he was unwell. He couldn't really go around and find some help or find food for himself. So Allah caused this plant to grow so that he could take cover of the leaves of this plant and also it was nourishment for him. It was medicine for him until he finally regained his strength. Okay, It is said that when he was thrown out of the belly of the fish, he was very weak in his body. And a comparison is given like a chick. Like a chick. Meaning, weak, fragile. Because you could imagine if somebody has been at sea for a very long time, okay, that affects their skin even. Doesn't it? The salt water. And imagine being swallowed by a fish. What enzymes, Allah alam, what all was inside, that must have affected his skin for sure. And gourd plants, by the way, or gourd vine, and these plants like zucchinis and Pumpkins and all these plants, they are extremely good for skin conditions. I, I myself have experienced it. My son, when he was born, he had severe eczema. And I remember we used to feed him zucchini, gourd, and things like that. And alhamdulillah, now there's no trace of it. And I got the inspiration from this ayah, actually. Because I figured that he must have had some skin condition, you know. Yunus alayhi salam, the one thing that must have been affected necessarily would be the skin. Because I don't know about you, when you go to the beach, your feet, they get cracked up because of all the salt. They really get cracked up. So the skin must have been affected. So, وَأَنْبَتْنَا عَلَيْهِ شَجَرَةً مِّنْ يَقْطِينَ What's the lesson over here? Eat zucchinis? <laughs> What's the lesson? 
Okay, the solution comes from Allah. Okay. When you turn to Allah, doing tasbih, look at how Allah didn't just take him out of that problem, but He also provided for him. So that he could have strength to go back to the work that he was to do. This is the help that comes from Allah. وَلَقَدْ نَادَانَا نُوحٍ فَلَنِعْمَ الْمُجِيبُونَ Allah is the best of those who respond.